tonight. We meet Brenton Au. He's the CEO of TouchStream. This is a cloud-based OTT live stream monitoring service for content providers. Hello, Brenton. Welcome. Hi, Larry. Good to be here. Brenton, I read the introduction, but I'm still not clear what TouchStream does. How do you describe your company? We focus on live stream monitoring. Um, that's what what we, we do best. And, and basically, we make sure that these streams are available and working well so that when people try to watch them, they're going to be there and be performing well. Brenton, help me understand, what is it that you're monitoring? We're monitoring the video streams for all of live uh, live channels. So say, for example, you have CBS All Access, channels in all the different states there. We are checking that that channel is working. We'll uh, test that, that channel and give our, our customer CBS the information that they need. Now, what that means for a viewer would be if they kind of go, go to the CBS app and press play, am I going to see that, that channel? Is it going to work? Uh, and that's what we're checking for. Well, wouldn't the broadcaster or the content originator be checking their own channel? We do that for them because basically we our customers are all very large and they have lots and lots of channels. They don't have the resources to build uh, the type of stream monitoring that we do. We are very focused on what we do, so we do a very in-depth analysis. We have a lot of data sharing agreements with the people who actually provide the stream. So CBS, for example doesn't actually provide the end stream at the point where you're going to connect to it. There's a third party that does that. And so we're kind of checking that third party to to, to validate that it's working. You're more looking at the technical quality of the channel, the content coming over it, Mm. as opposed to who's watching the channel. That's right, yes. We're not checking who's watching it. Other tools and things do that. We're checking that, that basically it's working. The provider that the, the content owner has chosen to, to get that content out distributed across the Internet, that they're doing the job that they're, they're being paid to do. How is your monitoring system different from what other companies do? It not only does the, the type of monitoring that we do, we're, we're kind of a little bit unique in the way we approach it. Other people do things, they embed things in, in the actual iPhone themselves to check, you know, what was the experience that, that the, that the uh, end user had, which is all very interesting, but it's not very detailed. So it doesn't have the type of information that uh, people need to actually fix a problem. It just tells you that there is a problem. It doesn't, doesn't give you any information about it. So what we did was we built something that had very deep technical information that um, the content delivery networks can actually use to find the, the, the root cause of the problem and, and fix it. What would be a typical problem that you'd spot? Stalled stream, so, so things where the way that the technology works, uh, if things don't get out to the edge of the network fast enough, uh, it can appear to be stalled, so you get caught in a little loop. Or it would slow down, so you'd see a bad quality stream, loss of pixelation, or it just wouldn't be available. You press press play on your app, and uh, nothing would happen. And say, "Oops, sorry, try later." Yeah, that's the worst one. I can see why people would be frustrated. You're giving a presentation at NAB. What are you talking about? So we're part of the Streaming Video Alliance, uh, which is a group of um, both vendors uh, like myself and other other software in the video industry, and also the content owners, so people like Fox and uh, Comcast and those sort of people. And we all come together to actually analyze what the overall issues in the streaming industry are. And we produce uh, basically best practice papers and, and, and white papers and things like that to help other people um, get the get the most out of streaming because we're trying to eradicate as many of the common problems as possible. So what my uh, project has been at the Streaming Video Alliance is best practices in end-to-end monitoring. Obviously, monitoring is my thing, and uh, end-to-end monitoring is really important. With with live streaming, there's lots of things that happen from from the time the the, uh, the the signal in the kind of the video format comes in and then it gets turned into a digital format and goes through a whole bunch of processes all on different effectively bits of hardware and at the end it comes out the other end and people watch it that 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 process is very complex uh, it has to happen 24 7 365 days a year uh, and lots of little things go wrong so we have put together, in co- combination with, with other, uh, well, even some of our competitors, well, pseudo competitors, uh, uh, the best practices of what you should be monitoring at each of those points to make sure that uh, you, you get on top of the problems as quickly as possible. 
And, and remember, we're doing live streaming. So with live streaming, you know, it's in the word, it's live. So if any problem happens, you have to get to it really quickly. In addition to your talk, are you introducing anything new at NAB? We're actually introducing uh, a new part of our product. Um, we, we do address uh, end-to-end monitoring, not by doing it all ourselves, but by integrating other other people's data uh, and, effect- uh, and, and any internal uh, monitoring people might already be doing. And we produce an end-to-end view. But what, what we actually found when we released this last year at NAP, and what we found in the last year is that basically you want to see the, the problem when it's live and you, you kind of quickly do what you can to patch it up. But you really want to go back in time and actually actually re-examine the incident that happened to look at all the little things that might might have contributed to, to it going wrong. What we introduced was what we call our end-to-end incident playback. And so basically it kind of it like, kind of like produces almost a little video of, of it because it's a very visual thing. And then you can stop it at any point and drill in and check all the metrics on all the different data points that we're collecting. So it gives you very granular data back in time just before the incident as it started to get worse. And you can check a lot of different things that um, previously you weren't able to, to do.